Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY, where I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I have five easy, but not cheesy, Dollar Tree Easter Farmhouse Home Decor DIYs. Here we go. So my idea for this video was to show you a small Dollar Tree haul. Some are spring Easter items, some are everyday items, and then show you what kind of Easter decor you could make with these. So I have one of these wood crates, one six by eight canvas uh, framed panel, two of these square banks, some foam dice, um, one of these bunny garlands, some carrots, two of these Easter signs, two just regular five by seven frames, some small Easter eggs, and some craft sticks. I don't end up using the incense warmer or the bunny, but um, those would be pretty easy to put together in Easter decor as well. So for our first two projects, I'm gonna use these two Easter signs, the two frames, the large craft sticks, some of these carrots and the bunny garland. So the first thing I'm going to do is from these signs, go ahead and remove the metal galvanized bunny with the little bow. They're super cute. I made sure to get the signs where the bunnies were facing different directions. And then go to your five by seven frames, Go ahead and remove the backing, the glass, the paper. And for me, I wanted to just dry brush some of my Waverly White chalk paint on these frames just to lighten them up a little bit and give them a little bit more of that rustic farmhouse look. So just however much or a little paint you want, go around the fronts and then of course also the edges of each of your frames. If you decided you put a little too much paint, go ahead and just sand them down a little bit. These frames are really great. These are the wood looking ones, but they are plastic. Next, I'm taking some of these larger craft sticks and measuring where I need to cut them so that they will fit the width of our picture frame. I believe for these frames, I needed 10 sticks for each to go all the way across and I want to give these a nice stained wood look. So of course, I go to my trusty antique wax, brush it on each of those craft sticks, and then wipe it off and you get that beautiful wood grain look. Then taking some of your hot glue, you're just gonna flip the frame over to the back and glue each of these sticks in place so you get that nice palette wood look. And here's both of my frames with the wood craft sticks. And then I'm just simply going to re-glue my metal galvanized bunnies to my little palette wood looking framed sign here. Then just return the back to each frame and these can stand up with the little stand or you could hang them on the wall if you wanted to add more, you could add carrots, but I really love the simplicity and the neutral colors with that galvanized metal. This is just a way to take a Dollar Tree product and upgrade it to make it look more high-end and unique. Now going back to the two signs that we took those metal bunnies from, I wasn't quite sure how I was wanting to use these. Um, the, paper, the glitter comes off pretty easily with a scraper but then I tried peeling off the paper some of them it would peel nicely so you just had the cardboard but you could probably just paint on the back since this is going to be the back and it's just for me I did not finish the back this time you guys know usually I like to finish everything but I could do that easily just painting this solid black but I'm going to connect these two signs using some more of those large craft sticks 
and then I have this nice blank canvas here. Now, you could paint this for the background. I decided to try to use this wood-looking um, shelf liner paper that I found at Dollar Tree, and it actually goes on pretty smoothly. I was pretty um, impressed with it. It is a little bit shiny, so you could always spray it with a matte or maybe do matte Mod Podge, but it really didn't bother me since it was mostly going to be covered up anyway. I found this super cute, I don't even know what it is. It's like a burlap kind of ribbon with string accents, and I decided to frame out my board with this ribbon. So I'm just doing the two long sides and then the two short sides to frame this out. And there you can see what it looks like with the ribbon around the frame. Now, I could not believe this bunny garland was $1. You have eight of these pretty large bunnies and they already have the cute little pom-pom tail. Four of them are lighter pastel colors and four of them are brighter colors. I decided to use the pastel, but then I have the other four bunnies still left for something else. So the four bunnies fit pretty much perfectly across the bottom of my sign, so I glued those on. Then using some of my poster sticker letters from Dollar Tree, they only come in black, so I wanted them white. I thought black would be too dark for this sign. Found the letters to spell Hoppy Spring and painted those with the little sponge. And then once those were dry, I just was able to peel them off and add them to my sign. If you're new to my channel, I sure hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And also, if everyone hits that bell and chooses all, then YouTube will notify you every time I upload new content. The last thing I did here with my sign is just added a couple of the carrots just to bring in a little more color and dimension. And I love how this turned out. So, so cute and simple and easy to do. For our third project today, I'm using one package of the foam dice from Dollar Tree, some balloons, I have some feathers there, and I have some foam. You could also use a stiff felt in place of the foam. Now, I have not shown this on my channel, I don't believe. I've painted these dice before, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually cover each of my dice with three balloons. You saw I cut part of the neck off there and I'm stretching it out. If you get your fingers in here, you can actually stretch these balloons over the dice. This is so much faster than trying to paint. So put one around and then go ahead and pull it up slightly. These scissors were not doing a very good job. And cut the excess so that it's flush against the dice. Then you're gonna do a second one using that spot where your hole is as the top this time and stretch it around. Do the same thing where you cut off the excess. Now I will say these are 12 inch balloons. Don't, I wouldn't try to do this with the nine inch balloons from Dollar Tree. I think it would be a hard time trying to get them around, but the 12 inch are really easy to do. Then I just did a third balloon just to cover up any possible spots. And then where the bottom of this balloon is will be the bottom of my project where that little hole is. So I did the, a white one, and then I'm going to do the same thing with three yellow balloons. Now taking my orange foam, I'm going to trace and cut out a heart. I will also do the same thing, one heart from the white foam. These will be the feet for our chick and our bunny. So I'm just gonna hot glue that orange heart to the bottom of my yellow dice and like I said this will be the feet for our little chick that we're going to make and then just cut a small little triangle for the beak and go ahead and glue that on as well. If you have trouble finding these foam dice at your store I would say you could always use a wood cube and these would be just as cute. 
Now with my white foam, I did just kind of free cut a pattern for the ears for my bunny. So I'll trace and cut out two of those white ears and then I'll take my pattern and cut it a little bit smaller to make a um, pattern for the pink that will go inside the bunny's ears. Go ahead and glue your white cube or foam dice to your white heart and then glue your ears together. These would be a really fun project to do with kids or maybe in a nursing home. Um, I think the possibilities are endless with all the different animals you could make with these foam dice and just covering them with balloons. Then with your scrap there, go ahead and round out a little piece for the bunny's nose. And I just used a black Sharpie marker for this to draw on the eyes and the mouth and whiskers for my bunny. I didn't get them perfectly centered, but I thought that kind of added to the homemade cute farmhouse look for these two little animals. So just glue that nose on and then I found a white pom-pom for the bunny's tail. This would look really cute with a really huge pom-pom too. Um, and then just draw your eyes for your chick. And we're also going to add a couple of yellow feathers. I have seen feathers like this at Dollar Tree. So just pull out a couple yellow ones or whatever color you want and we'll glue these to the back of our chick. I decided to add a little black and white gingham bow to my chick and this will kind of go on the corner of the head kind of like it's in its hair I guess if it's like a girl chick and then I'm gonna take some jute twine and wrap it around my hands a few or my fingers a few times and cut that off and then take another piece to tie that in half just to cut and tie a little bow that will add to our bunny right by its ears. Oh my goodness, how cute are these little bunny and chick? These would be great in a tiered tray. You could make these for each of your grandchildren. I just think they are super cute. And the covering the dice with the balloons is genius. Actually, now that I think of it, I think I did show that once, but that was to make word blocks. This is another way you could use the foam dice. For project number four, I'm just using one of these wood crates and a frame from Dollar Tree. Also some floral foam, some florals, and some paint. So taking one of these six by eight frames that I had a ton of, go ahead and remove the canvas. If you do it carefully, you can reuse the canvas for something else, but I am just wanting the frame for this. Um, after removing all the staples, I'm going ahead and this is eight inches. I'm marking it at four because now I'm going to take my saw and miter box and I'm going to cut this frame in half basically to make two C's out of it. I hope you guys are having a great day and that you'll also after watching this video head over to Facebook and Instagram and follow me there. 
I like to post pictures of what I'm working on and give previews of upcoming videos. Once I have these two cut and sanded so they match, I'm just going to use some wood glue and put those together. These are gonna end up being the handle to our little basket we're making here. I decided to give the outside of my crate a coat of Waverly White chalk paint, and I did go ahead and just leave the inside natural because it's going to be covered up anyway by what we put inside. Also go ahead and give your handle a coat of the white chalk paint. I was going to leave this just plain white and then I decided to do something else with it. You'll see in a second. Go ahead and dry brush some of your antique wax or even just some brown paint just to give our crate, if you choose, a little more of a worn and rustic look. So I decided this was very straight edges and I wanted to add some texture to the handle of this basket. So I'm taking some jute twine and hot gluing just this first time around the base here. I'm going to wrap this entire handle with my jute twine from Crafters Square. And here's what it looks like all finished. Just adding some hot glue there. I'm then going to glue it to my crate to, like I said, make a little handle for this wood basket. Fitting some floral foam inside. I'm not even hot gluing it. I'm just setting it in there and then hot gluing on the top so I can add a little bit of reindeer moss just to cover up that floral foam. This is, again, one of those projects that's totally customizable. I just used some spring floral and greenery that I had on hand. I had these little white flowers and I also had some lavender from Dollar Tree and just cutting little pieces and sticking them in wherever you see fit. This is a great little basket to add some spring uh, fun to your decor. You could also make these as little Easter baskets. I'm thinking of doing that for my kids, maybe putting their names on the front instead of the word flowers that I'm doing here. And then you could reuse these each year to put some little candy and treats. My kids are too old to look for eggs, but I still like to give them like a DVD and some candy. So. Here's what our little flower basket looked like with just a couple items from Dollar Tree. I may even make some of these to sell in my craft show this spring. And for our final project, I'm using two of these square banks, some napkins, some foam eggs and some carrots and moss, some rocks and some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to do two versions of this project to show you more of a general um, spring and then more of a resurrection Easter um, theme. So because the glass can't come out of these, I went ahead and did painter's tape around the glass and I'm just going to dry brush my white paint. Uh, these are black plastic and I wanted them a little lighter for spring. I have seen white versions of these banks at different times but this is what I had on hand. So feel free to take what you find and modify it to fit your needs. So once I did the, all the sides, I did go around that front a little bit and did this to both of my banks. I decided to go ahead and paint one coat of paint over that colorful background because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to decoupage with some Mod Podge a thin uh, piece of napkin on the backing of each of my banks. So for the more resurrection themed one, I liked the spring flowers. So just line that up and rub it gently so you don't rip the napkin and then put another thin layer of Mod Podge over the top just to seal that down to let it dry. Now these napkins, I've seen some people haul them from Dollar Tree. I actually got mine at a local dollar store, but I know Hobby Lobby has napkins like this as well. I thought this was really pretty. Um, even though we don't really celebrate the Easter Bunny at our house, I think little bunnies and chicks 
just um, symbolizes new life that we have in the spring. So for my resurrection one, I am going to make another little tumbling tower cross just out of five of these natural colored uh, tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. And I'm just using hot glue to put those together. Now that my napkin is dry, you can use probably scissors would actually be easier because they are so thin. Trim the edges from your napkins and the backgrounds of your banks. Now coming to this bank that I'm going to do the resurrection one. I actually decided to use the other background for this one. I'm going to hot glue some moss in the bottom and then just add some other decorations to go with our theme. Now just adding a few of the foam eggs. These were actually from Dollar General, but I know they have eggs like this at Dollar Tree as well. We're adding a few eggs and a couple of the string carrots into our box and then putting the backing back on. And look at how cute that is. You could even add a bow to the front if you want or um, some wording with stickers on the front, but I just liked it how it was. Now for the other one, the resurrection one, I put a little bit less grass because I'm going to also add this cross and some rocks just to symbolize the empty tomb and then wrapping some purple ribbon around the cross. We'll just put that flower background on the back and here's two different ways you can use these banks to make Easter or spring little shadow box pictures. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you guys enjoyed these five projects that are very easy to make with a few Dollar Tree items, but look very nice and not homemade at all. High-end home decor on a budget is what I love to do. Again, please let me know in the comments which of these was your favorite, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.